What's going on guys? John Elder here from Konami.com and in this video, we're going to look at using combo boxes with PyQD5 and Python. Alright guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to look at combo boxes with PyQT5. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodingMe.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. That's all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee at just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, like I said, in this video, we're going to look at combo boxes, these drop down boxes with PyQT5. So we can click on something, click the thing, and we can access whatever's in there. We can also type something else. So hello. Hit enter and it adds to the combo box. You can see if we click mushrooms and then come back. Now, hello is up at the top. I click it, it says you picked hello. And so that's what we're going to look at in this video. So, so I've got a file called combo.py. This is the same exact code that we worked on in the last video. If you didn't see that video, check the link in the comment section below for the playlist. You can also get the code for that video in the comment section for that video. And you can find that link in the playlist as well. So, uh, what we've got here is we've imported our PyQT5, our widgets, and our GUI. We've got our main app. Our title says Hello World. We've got our vertical layout set, the QV box layout. And we've got basically a label, an entry box, and a button. Now, in this video, we're not going to use an entry box. We're going to work on the combo box, right? So the rest of this will stay the same. We'll tweak it a little bit. So I still want to have a label on top and a button below, and then we want the combo box in the middle. So in the next few videos, I'm just going to be spending a little bit of time talking about basic widgets like combo boxes. We'll probably do spin boxes, you know, basic widgets like that. So a combo box is a very common widget that you're going to use. I can't think of any app that doesn't have some sort of combo box in some way. It's just a very basic thing to know. And combo boxes are super easy with PyQT5. So let's just create a variable. I'm going to call it my underscore combo. And we set this equal to a QTW dot some widget. And the widget we want is the Q combo box, right? And notice we start with a Q, it's capitalized, the C and the B and combo box are both capitalized. And so we, this is a function. And we don't really need to pass anything, but we can pass self. It's always kind of a good idea. I didn't mention it in the last video, but it's always sort of a good idea when you're defining a widget to pass self. So you get the main window stuff. So if you know, the main window closes, this will close by default, it should anyway, but this sort of makes sure it happens. Uh, so you could put that in there or not it doesn't really matter. And that's all we need. Now we could put some other properties in here. And we'll talk about those in a minute. But for now, just defining this thing, that's all we need. So now we can add items to to the combo box. And to do that, there's several, there's a couple of different ways we can go my underscore combo, which is the name of our combo box dot add item. And you'll notice we've got this camel case going on. If you're curious why PyQT uses camel case instead of underscores like most Python stuff does, you know, in regular Python, we would call this like something like that. But with PyQD5, it's always camel case like that. And that's because PyQD5 is based on QT, which is built completely with C++. It's a very C++ oriented thing. And most of the C++ things that you use kind of got brought over in the Python version and stuck around. So that's one of the reasons why we see things like that. So anyway, it doesn't matter. So to add an item, we can just add it. So I can go pepperoni. So we're picking a pizza thing or something. And let's come up here to our label and then let's say, uh, pick something from the list. Hello? I don't know. And let's make this font a little bigger too, just for fun. Okay, so we've now added an item and it's just one thing. So we can continue to do that. We can just go, for instance, make I don't know, a few more of these and we can say, you know, cheese. We can go mushroom. We can go, I don't know, what's something else? Peppers, are there peppers on pizzas? Yeah, I think so. So this will do that. Now we can do a couple of things here. We can add other sort of um, data type things here. So if we wanted to, for instance, have this do something else, we could give it a number like one, or we could give it some other thing like uh, something, right? Uh, we could pass, like I said, a number, we'll call this one two. Uh, we could pass objects in here. So you could pull your QTW dot Q widget from up here. Right? 
We could pull this entire object in here if we wanted to and reference that, or you could just leave it blank like that. And we'll get into what these things are in just a second, but just sort of keep this in mind. So this is one way to do it. And there's a couple other ways we'll probably talk about in just a second. But for now, let's get this thing up and running to make sure all of this is working correctly. So let's come down here to my button. And when we press it, we want this press it function to be called. And here's that press it function. We did this all in the last video. And when that happens, well, one, it's clearing the entry box and we don't have an entry box anymore. So let's get rid of that. And then what it's doing here, it's changing our label to something here. And instead of this, let's have it say you picked. And then instead of my entry dot text, this will be my combo dot something, right? Now there are several different things you can call. You can call text, you can call data, which will bring this thing forward. Text will reference the first thing. Data will reference the second thing. You can also call the index, which will give the index number of the item. So each of these are numbered, right? Just like a Python index. So the first one is the zeroth item. Pepperoni is zero. Cheese is one, mushroom is two, peppers are three. So you can call the index item. We just want to call text, but instead of text, it's actually current text. Now notice the lowercase c and the uppercase t. Got our camel case going on as always. Oops. So, okay, that looks good. Now, one last thing we have to do, whenever we create a widget, we always have to then put it on the screen. Let's say uh, put combo box on the screen. And to do that, we could just copy this same thing that we did for our label. And instead of my label, this is, of course, my combo. Because that's what we called it right here. So, okay, that should do the trick. Yep, let's go ahead and save this and run it. Head back over to our terminal. Notice I've got my virtual environment turned on. I'm in my C PyQt5 directory, which is the directory we set up in the last video to hold all of our PyQt files. And to run this, we just go Python combo.py and pick something from the list below. We can pick mushroom, click the button. Boom, you picked mushroom. Very cool. Cheese, you pick cheese. Now it's returning the thing that we have listed here. So peppers, you picked peppers because down here, right here, we told it to return the current text. We could also have it return the current data, right? Which I mentioned is the second thing listed right here. So something to this, this whole class thing here or nothing here at all. So if we go ahead and save this, run it. Now, when we click on one of these things, for instance, peppers, remember peppers didn't have a data type after it. So we click this, it says none. Uh, for pepperoni, it was something. For cheese, it was the number two. For mushrooms, it was that whole object. So it's returning in a whole object here, which is a class of pyqt5.qt widgets.qt widget, which is kind of interesting. And like I said, the last one just has nothing at all. So it returns none. So if you want to return something like that, you could do that. There are instances where you may want to do that. We can also come down here and instead of current data, we can call current index. So if we save this and run it, this will return the index number of the item selected. So remember, pepperoni is the zeroth item. So this will return zero. Cheese is the first item, so one. Mushrooms is the second item. And peppers is the third item. Even though there are four items, remember, these are just like Python lists, they start at zero. So pepperoni, zero. So why is that useful? Well, there are times when you may want to pull out a specific index number. You can do that. There are times you may not know how many items are in your list and you need to loop through and find out. You can use that for that. Lots of different reasons why you might want the index number for your combo box. So, okay, that's cool. Now, one more thing I want to look at is we can edit this. We can make this to where we can type something in. You can see here, I'm clicking on the first one here. And if I type, you can't tell I'm typing though, uh, nothing happens. That's because this is not editable. We can set it to become editable and then we can add items to our combo box by typing them here and then hitting enter on our keyboard. So let's go ahead and do that real quick, super easy. We just come back here to where we defined our combo box and we passed in self. We also wanna pass in now a couple of other things. Let me put this on a separate line so we can read it easier. We wanna make this editable. So we just call edit a bowl and set that equal to true, right? It's false by default. And we wanna be able to now say, okay, where do we wanna insert the new item? At the top, at the bottom, where? Well, we can set the insert 
policy, right? And then this will be a QTW dot Q combo box dot, what do we wanna do? I wanna insert this at top. And again, notice all the camel case here. I is capitalized, A is capitalized in at, T is capitalized in top. Again, here are Q, C, and B are capitalized in that. Okay, so that should do the trick there. So if we save this and run it, you can see now there's a cursor here that's blinking. So I can sort of highlight this and hit delete and then type in uh, John Elder, right? And then I just hit enter and nothing really seems to have happened. But when I click this now, I can see it's on there. And if I change it to something else and then change it back, sure enough, it's on there. Now, check this out. When I click this, it, it says zero, but let's change this back to data. So let's head back over here and down here, instead of returning the index, let's return data. So if we save this, run it again, and watch this, this is interesting. If we pick pepperoni and we click the button, it says you picked something because something was the data for pepperoni. Remember for mushroom, it was that whole object, there it is. Well, let's add something now. So I can delete this and type in John Elder and hit enter, so now it's in there. Now I can toggle this to peppers that didn't have anything, none. I can toggle this back to pepperoni, which had something, right? Now I can toggle it to John Elder. It has none too. Why? Because we just added John Elder manually and there was no data type. There's no where to put a data type even. It's not really a data type. It's a data object, I guess. Uh, there's nowhere to put a data thing, right? So it has none. So if you're gonna use an editable thing, keep that in mind. There won't You won't be able to add a, a data thing to the end of it. If you're just dealing with text, this is no big deal. So we can change this back to text. Instead of current data, we change this to current text. Probably wanna spell it right. Save this, run it. Click the button, you pick pepperoni. I can type in John Elder, hit enter. Toggle this to something else. You click mushrooms, John Elder. You picked John Elder. You should always pick John Elder. <laughs> anyway, so it works with text. So the current text will be whatever you typed in because obviously that's what the current text is, what you typed in. That's what's added to the list that's shown on the screen right here for our dropdown. So that's pretty much all there is that's interesting about combo boxes. We could fiddle with this thing a little bit if we came back up here to where we defined it and we inserted it at top, we could, you know, try to insert at bottom. Save this, run it. Pull this guy over. Let's type in John Elder. Boom, hit enter. Now you can see now it's at the bottom. We can click here. You pick peppers. Pepperoni is still the first thing listed. John Elder is at the bottom of the list. I would probably normally do that because. When you're adding things, you, you tend to want to add them to the bottom, which leads me to the last thing I want to talk about. When we first created this thing, I mentioned there are several ways to add items. So we did this add item. You could also do plural if you have several to do at once. So we could go my underscore combo dot add items, right? And now you can pass in a Python list. You can see our square brackets. And inside of here, I could just, you know, one, two, three, whatever. Now we, we can pass this list. Now this will add all of them to the end of the list. So every time we're using one of these things, it's adding them to the end of the combo list. So let's go ahead and save this and run it, make sure that looks okay. So now when we click this, we see down at the bottom, one, two, three, and one per line, it's adding them the things from our Python list. We can also insert into specific positions. And to do that, we call my combo dot insert item, right? And you can do the same thing here, plural, I believe, like we did here with the Python list, but just do singular insert item. Now this will take two arguments, a position and a thing. So let me call this third thing. So this is what's gonna be added to the combo box. Now we have to tell it where we wanna insert this. So zero, one, two, three, let's put this in the second position. So zero, one, two, which will be the third thing in the second position, right? Because remember these all start at zero. 
So if we go ahead and save this and run it, we see pepperoni one, cheese, and then third thing has been inserted in the third spot here, but it's the, it's the second spot. It's the second index item, but it's the third thing. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, anyway, you can do it like that. So if you know exactly where you wanna put it, wh which index position, you can use insert item. Like I said, you could also do the plural and we can create a Python list here. And you know, one, two, uh, quotation marks around this guy, one, two, third thing. Okay, that looks good, save this, run it. So this will, in that second index position, add those three things. So we can see one, two, and then here's one, two, third thing. So it added these three things right here to the second position, which is zero, one, two, right? Make sense? And uh, pretty cool. So those are combo boxes. Like I said, you're always gonna use combo boxes and really, really easy. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. So you pay just $49 taxes, all my courses, over 47 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com, and I'll see you in the next video.